Hi, my name is Liz. I'm a specialist midwife for diabetes working at Bark and Havering and Redbridge NHS Trust, and specifically working at Queen's and King George Maternity Unit. You may have had a recent blood test confirming a diagnosis of gestational diabetes in your pregnancy, and I've put together this video to hopefully help explain what gestational diabetes means and how it's going to be treated during your pregnancy. Gestational diabetes is diabetes that women develop in pregnancy. Anyone can develop this type of diabetes and it can be developed at any gestation during pregnancy. For most women, this type of diabetes does go away after the baby is born. However, for a small percentage of ladies, it will not go away. And what we recommend is that six weeks after the birth of your baby, you have a repeat blood test taken. When you do develop gestational diabetes in pregnancy, 50% of ladies in the future will go on and develop type 2 diabetes. So it is recommended that you also get yourself checked yearly by your GP for type 2 diabetes. So why do women get gestational diabetes in pregnancy? Gestational diabetes is caused by the placental hormones. So the placenta produces four hormones and these hormones are responsible for making your baby grow and maintaining the pregnancy. But they interfere or they don't allow your own insulin hormone to control the sugar that you get every day from your food and drink. If your own insulin is not controlling the sugar levels within your blood, then the excess sugar is free to go across to the baby. Gestational diabetes is very treatable in pregnancy. However, if it is not treated, it can cause complications to you and the baby. So we need to bear in mind that when gestational diabetes is treated, most of these complications are prevented. So for you as a pregnant lady, if someone has got high blood sugars in pregnancy, then you are more at risk of developing infections throughout the pregnancy, infections such as thrush and also urine infections. So again, by controlling the blood sugars within your um, pregnancy, you're aiming to hopefully reduce and prevent this happening. High blood sugars in pregnancy can also cause you to produce extra fluid around the baby, a condition called polyhydramnus, and again, this can lead to an earlier delivery. For your baby, the baby does not develop diabetes in pregnancy. However, if the mother's blood sugars are high throughout the weeks of pregnancy, the baby can put on extra weight and a larger baby can give us more complications when it comes to the delivery of your baby. The complications that we do worry about is that the babies can be larger, especially around the shoulders, and this can cause trauma to you during your labour, but also it can be traumatic for the baby's shoulders which can be a long-term condition for the baby. And again, it's important to bear in mind, if we treat gestational diabetes in pregnancy, we can reduce the risk of this happening. The other concern is if, if mum's blood sugars are high throughout the pregnancy, then the baby can suffer low blood sugars when it is born. So again, if your blood sugars are treated during the weeks of pregnancy, most babies are born and adapt and maintain their own blood sugars without any problems. You may ask, why do some women get diabetes in pregnancy? Or why were you tested for this type of diabetes? Lots of women can get gestation diabetes in pregnancy and most women develop it within the second to third trimester. So you may have, uh, may have been asked to have this test due to your family history of, of having diabetes. It may be because of your BMI. So if your BMI was greater than 30 whenever you booked for your maternity care. It may be because you're of Asian or African origin. It may be because you've had diabetes in a previous pregnancy. Or it may be because you've had a recent scan to show that the baby is putting on extra weight or you've developed extra fluid around the baby. So these are all the risk factors for when someone to develop gestational diabetes in pregnancy. How is gestational diabetes treated and monitored throughout your pregnancy? So the first important thing to address is a healthy diet. Hopefully you are having a healthy diet already in your pregnancy, but there's lots of hidden sugars in our foods that we obtain every day. So first we're going to look at the diet. Now it's really important that you aim to eat three meals a day, your breakfast, your lunch and your dinner. We would ask you to try and have four to five hours between your meals and preferably to have your evening meal finished by 8 p.m. at the very latest. You can also have snacks in between the meals throughout the day to prevent hunger. So the most obvious sugars and unhealthy foods, we would ask you to try and avoid these in pregnancy. So for example, things like sugar, 
honey, sweets, biscuits, chocolate, crisps, desserts, takeaways. So as much as possible, we'd ask you to try and avoid these. The second group of foods that we also need to be mindful is carbohydrates. So your carbohydrates are your bread, your cereal, your rice, your pasta, potatoes, chapati, naans, couscous, bulgur wheat, noodles. All of these foods are called carbohydrates and they also turn into sugar whenever they're absorbed into the bloodstream. You do have to eat these, these foods in your diet and you should not cut them out of your diet. However, there are three important points to remember. In each of your meals, you should try and aim for one carbohydrate at a time. So for example, you might have cereal or toast for breakfast. You might have a sandwich or a jacket potato for lunch. We'd ask you to try and make that carbohydrate high fiber carbohydrate. So for example, high fiber cereals, wholemeal bread, brown pasta, brown rice. And the third important point is to have small portions because these are the foods we all love to go back to the saucepan for an extra portion. So, if we look at the individual meals, I'm going to give you some examples of what the portions are and what type of foods you should have um, at each meal. So if we look at breakfast, for example, if you have cereals, then the high fibre cereals would be porridge, Weetabix, that would be two Weetabix, shredded wheat, two shredded wheat, all bran or plain special K. Try and use semi-skim milk. And again, if you didn't use sugar previously, we'd ask you to try and use a sweetener. If you have bread for breakfast or in a sandwich, then two slices of granary bread would be a portion at any one of these meals. Whenever you have a pro sorry, whenever you have a carbohydrate, it is a good idea to pair it with a protein. So at breakfast time, you can use butter on your toes, but also it's a good idea to perhaps use egg. So again, looking at the way we cook things is really important. So again, a boiled egg, a scrambled egg, or an omelette would be healthier than a fried egg. Another healthy protein would be cheese. So again, you can use pasteurized soft cheese, or you can grate cheddar cheese. Also, lean meats like ham, chicken is also a healthy protein. So a protein would be much healthier rather than jam on your toast. Peanut butter is another option of a healthy protein, but again, you do have to try and um, have a good quality peanut butter rather than the cheaper brands. Lunch, so an example at lunch, again, if you have a hot meal at lunchtime, again, if we look at the carbohydrate, it may be rice, it may be pasta, or it may be potatoes. So again, rice is one of the more starchy carbohydrates. We would recommend that you only have it once a day. Basmati rice would be um, better than long grain rice. And again, the portion of rice is, is approximately a teacupful of cooked rice or two ladle spoonfuls. So on your plate, remember it's one carbohydrate. So if you have rice, we'd ask you to avoid potatoes at the same time. So try to um, have extra protein on your plate. So again, to have an extra piece of fish, have an extra piece of chicken or extra meat or extra vegetarian and then lots of extra vegetables and salad to bulk out your meal and to fill you up. So what you're aiming for is, is to have one carbohydrate, extra protein and extra veg and salad. So if we address the other carbohydrates like potatoes, the healthiest way to have potatoes would be boiled potatoes with the skin on them. So again, you're talking about three to four egg sized potatoes or a jacket potato the size of your fist. Sweet potato is lower GI, and again, that is healthier than regular potato. Pasta, again, wholemeal pasta would be recommended. Again, a portion of pasta would be a small cereal bowl of pasta. And again, bringing in extra protein, meat, chicken, fish, or vegetarian, and extra vegetables and salad. Home cooking is really important, so as much as possible, we'd ask you to mix homemade sauces, with tinned tomatoes, onion, garlic, to try and avoid using jars or ready-made sauces if you can. If you have to use a ready-made jar, then we'd recommend that you perhaps use half the jar and add a tin of tomatoes to dilute it down so it's not so, so sweet. Other foods that you also may consider um, for your carbohydrates would be couscous, bulgur wheat, or quinoa. Again, these tend to be healthier than rice, and if 
you do find that your blood sugars are particularly high with rice or pasta, these are an alternative to try. And again, similar portions, it would be two serving spoonfuls. And again, trying to bulk out your plate with extra protein and veg and salad. In between your meals, it is important to try and have a snack. So lots of people say that they don't regularly snack, but because the meals are going to be a little bit smaller, it is recommended to have a snack so to avoid overeating in the evening. Now a recommended snack would be something like a fruit. Again, fruit has got lots of natural sugar, and even though it is a healthier sugar, you, it's recommended that you only have three to four fruits a day, but only one fruit in between each meal. So one fruit would be example would be a small banana, it would be one apple, it would be a handful of strawberries or a handful of berries. The sweeter fruits tend to be mangoes, melons, pineapples, pomegranate. Again, these are the type of fruits if you can limit them. You can still eat them, but again, a mango would be half a mango in the morning, half in the afternoon. Melon would be a small segment, or pineapple would be a pineapple slice. Again, whenever you have fruit, it's a good idea to try and pair it with a protein. So again, Greek yogurt or plain natural yogurt, full fat is, if you have a portion of that alongside your fruit throughout the day, that again can help slow down the absorption of the sugar and also fill you up. Another idea for a snack may be a handful of nuts. So things like almonds, walnuts, Brazil nuts, again, plain nuts or alongside a glass of semi-skim milk is also a healthy snack. Crackers, so mid-afternoon, if you have a cup of tea or you need a snack, a um, crackers would be, example, Rye Vita crackers or oat cakes. So again, two to three crackers, but again, trying to put a protein alongside them, like some chicken, some cheese, some hummus, and a glass of milk or a cup of tea is also a, considered a healthy snack. Drinks. So again, all fruit juices, we'd ask you to try and avoid as much as possible because again, these have got lots of natural sugars from the fruit. As an alternative, squashes, so no added sugar, squashes would be an alternative. If you have fizzy drinks, then we would recommend diet or zero. Water, of course, is, is, is best. And again, you can add the no added sugar squashes to sparkling water if you need that fizziness um, in your drink. We would, a would ask you to try and avoid milkshakes, smoothies, um, and any uh, powder drinks or any yogurt-based drinks as much as possible. Um, so to give you an example of how a diet plan would be throughout the day, we would recommend breakfast if we can before 9, lunch before 2 p.m., and again evening meal before 8 p.m., and having a snack in between to try and help avoid hunger. The second most important thing to treat gestational diabetes is also exercise. So we would encourage you to be as active as possible, especially after eating meals. So it's recommended that all pregnant women should aim for 20 to 30 minutes of physical activity daily. And again, you will notice that this will lower your blood sugars, but also it is good for your physical and mental health. The third thing that we would need to do to help monitor and treat your diabetes is teach you how to do your own blood sugar testing and that we're going to come on to that in a moment. After you start testing your blood sugars, we'll ask you to return to the antenatal diabetic clinic at either Queen's Hospital or King George's, and you will be seen by specialist midwife to help address any concerns that you have regarding this gestational diabetes. You will also then be asked to have an additional scan, approximately 34 to 36 weeks, and you'll be reviewed by the consultant obstetrician around 36 to 37 weeks to discuss and plan your delivery. Now again, it depends. Lots of um, ladies have concerns about when, the baby, when their baby will be delivered. Ladies who do develop gestational diabetes in pregnancy, we are aiming to try and encourage you to deliver your baby as close to your due date as possible. So most ladies with gestational diabetes, if it's controlled well on diet, they will go full term and actually up to 41 weeks. If the diet was not enough to control the diabetes, then some ladies will need medication in pregnancy. So metformin is an oral tablet that we can use in pregnancy, which is also beneficial. However, if, it was on, if you didn't tolerate it or that wasn't enough, then some ladies will need insulin. So if the pregnancy did need medication, 
then delivery can be recommended in between 39 to 40 weeks. And this will be discussed with your consultant obstetrician. Place of delivery, so again, Queen's Maternity Unit is where you will be advised to, um, to deliver your baby. Some ladies with gestational diabetes can and are encouraged to deliver on the birth centre, but this is something that we will be individually discussing with you when you attend for your antenatal care.